you will notice that we're going to be recording the session. That is obviously so that people can um, re-watch the questions that they ask being answered. And also then, of course, so that people who couldn't join us today um, possibly will then be able to join us um, virtually afterwards by watching the video and therefore be able to um, get their questions answered as well. Um, today, joining us, let's just see if everybody can have their... Um, Cameras on from the um, group. Let me just see quickly if I can see everybody here. Right, um, today on the panel, um, we have with us Colleen Cronier, who is the CEO of Brainline, um, the holding company. And then we also have with us uh, Adele Drenth, who is the coordinator for the Cloud School for the Senior School, that is from grade up, eight upwards. And then we also have with us Ghada Remit. Ghada is um, in the same role, but for the juniors. So everybody up to grade um, seven and including then grade seven. Um, at the bottom of your screen, you will see that there is an option for you um, in the Q&A to be able to then um, ask us questions. So I see the first question is already there. Thank you. We'll look at that in a second. Um, so perhaps can I just um, in, get each of the panelists to just introduce themselves to you a little bit more, tell them what their role is, you what their role is, you did see their email addresses just now. Um, in other words, if you want to contact them then, then you know exactly why you are contacting that specific individual. And then at the same time, while you know why you're contacting them, um, you know that you're contacting the right person because very often I think we get people who say, but I've sent three emails, but they have not necessarily been to the same um, or to the correct person. And it's taken sort of a whole channel of events to actually get the, the questions um, answered or the, the queries attended to. So the first thing then for myself, um, my name is uh, Corin Reinecke and I am then the um, director of Assessment Aspects. Now, Assessment Aspects is the division of Brainline, the holding company, which is responsible for all the assessments. So, um, Assessment Aspects then is the one that actually sees to it that your child has, or you yourself, if you have enrolled, that you have assessments. We see to it that your assessments are valid, that they're reliable, that they comply with everything that is expected from us, not only then by the Department of Basic Education, but also then specifically by our examining body, the IEB. So I see the questions are popping up. That's absolutely awesome. I'm going to hand over to Colleen. Colleen, if you would like to just um, start with an introduction then, and then we'll go on from there to Adal and Gerda, please. Good afternoon and welcome to everybody and welcome to our high school, Adal, you and welcome to our primary school, Gerda, you and everybody else who is visiting us today. Today is the day to ask all of your questions. I can see them streaming in car and we're going to have a wonderful time to answer all these questions and I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm the CEO of Brainline. Um, Brainline has been our collective pride and joy over the past number of years. Um, all of our staff has been with us many, many years, decades, some of them, and we are a team who actually look forward to helping our clients, especially during this time where everything, I, they, I heard the term used, Karen, that they say crisis homeschooling. We are currently crisis homeschooling, and that's just not all, just about education. It's all about what do we do in our family? How do we fit school? We are forced to fit school within our lifestyles and how do we do that? So yes, there's lots of anxiousness out there and lots of confusion out there. And this is what Ask Brainline is all about, trying to allay some of that confusion. So welcome to everybody and we're gonna have a lovely time together. Adele, Great, over to you. Adele? Hi, I'm Adele. I'm the coordinator for the high school, grade 8 to 12, and uh, my job is to keep all the teachers um, friendly and happy with what they're doing, teaching online. So we are responsible for our online classes for the high school, grade 8 to 12, in all our subjects. We have classes on a weekly basis in a specific time slot, 
um, where you have contact with a specialized um, teacher subject specialist that can help you cover some of the content. So we identify specific um, content that we think is um, difficult for students to grasp on their own when, when they're doing homeschooling, of course. And also we focus on assessments um, to help them pass those as well. So by the end of the year that you have quality time with a qualified teacher virtually via a link that we share with you and we help you to go through the content at a timely manner. Thanks, Gerda. Good day, I'm Gerda and I am responsible for grade one to seven. So anything you need um, with regards to academics or even technical stuff, I'll, um, I will help you in the, uh, correct, in the right direction. But everything you need for grade one to seven, grade R to seven, on the go to goal. And can I say that Gerda is really the go to goal and the kids absolutely love her and they're small, so we can call them kids. Because, um, you know, I think all of us have these adult faces when we speak to adults. And then when we speak to the kids that we really love, the students, whatever their ages are, then we just turn into those people that they really love to see. We become the real teachers. So today you're seeing, seeing us not in our teacher roles. You would love to see us all in our teacher roles, I think, with our hands flying and our arms going and forgetting about our hair that gets flapped around somewhere in between as well and glasses that get popped on our heads. So we trust that you're all going to enjoy that somewhere along the line in, our, in your interaction with us over the time to come. I think I'll start off with the first question because it's something that leads on to very nicely into all the different areas. And that is, it says, how does the school go around an issue of individual attention? I think there it's a very important thing that I'm going to sort of ask Colleen to answer in terms of um, the brain line mentor and her role and, and the caring that we give and, and the same then with Gerda with the juniors and then Adele and Gerda then to answer that with regard to um, how, does, how do we actually respond in and look after them as individuals in terms of our classes or then in terms of our response to queries. So Colleen perhaps you could start that one. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, Karen, I also see a few other questions that I'd like to, if you would allow me to address as I go through or everything. So stop me if I'm not answering the right questions or steal them from me if you'd like to answer them. Um, I just saw a question here that says, what is the difference between brain line and impact? Now, I think it's very difficult for one company to compare itself to another company because we don't always know what the inner workings are of a particular company, but I'll try to point out a few of those. Um, I think one of the main differences between Brainline and Impact is that we are registered with different examination boards. Brainline is registered with the Independent Examination Board or the IEB as they are commonly known. And they are the exam boards with whom most of our independent schools are affiliated. And we are one of the very few um, distance education or homeschooling education or um, whatever you would like to call us service providers who are registered with the IB and we are very proud to be registered with them. They are known for their exceptionally high standards and that doesn't mean that there are actually somebody or an exam body who offers difficult exam papers. No, that's not it. It's about the rigor of their exams. It's how valid and reliable the exams are and their consistency in delivering quality education to learners and absolutely preparing them for life after school and tertiary studies. That is the prime object, objective of the IB and that is something that we align ourselves with. Those are the values that we align ourselves with. Companies such as Impact are um, registered as far as we can ascertain with an exam board called Sakai, South African Comprehensive Assessment Institute. And Sakai, as far as we know, align themselves mostly with distance education candidates. I cannot say that I'm familiar with their values. Um, I'm sure that those are all clearly indicated on their website and in their conversation with their clients. That's the main difference between the two of us. I think in a nutshell, the delivery of our curriculum, the way that we offer service to distance education candidates and homeschooling if their child is under the age of 15, is probably product-wise how we, um, the, the biggest difference between the two of us. 
but it's very difficult for me to say anything else other than that i don't think it would be ethical of me um, to say anything else other than that as well but for the fact that what we do is our lifeline it is what we love it is what we live for every day um and it, that's that's what gives us joy and that's what's what we've been doing for more than 30 years one cannot do something for more than 30 years and then say you don't like it this is our life and this is what we treasure right let's see what we can answer here as well um, Liesl, there's one that you uh, took on on the issue of individual attention. I'm going to just add something there as well, especially at this point in time for our grade 12s. I think our, our grade 12s is out of the complete cohort of learners. It's probably the ones are most anxious at this stage because they don't know how are they going to, if they join us right now, how are they going to cope with everything? How are they going to divide the curriculum sensibly so that they can get a good chance of passing the final exams? And our responsibility, as we see, it, is to manage that and help them through this transition. And that's where the individual attention and our mental program is extremely important. You will also find that our mentor also looks at um, different issues, not only with regard to academics, but also about anxiety and depression in our learners. Because I'm so anxious about everything, it can cause all sorts of things and actually completely incapacitates me. And I'm not able to cope with the curriculum and I'm not able to cope with this extreme work schedule. And what can we do about that? And we have sessions with professional people that we speak to on a, main, on a weekly basis. And that is a program that the mentor, Liesl Brive, Mrs. Liesl Brive, actually helps us to run. And she's going to discuss with you a little bit later and Karen, our director of assessment, would tell you exactly how do we individually look at the portfolio of our grade 12s? How do we ensure that the portfolio that they actually submit to the IB is actually complete and reflects the true um, academic pro progress of our learners. Um, Anne says, please share your approach on class, uh, class sizes. And I'm delighted to say that class sizes actually doesn't matter to us. We address all of the issues of all of our learners in our live webinars. We record all of those and then we put them onto the learner management system where our learners are able to access that. However, having said that, we are extremely disciplined within those live webinars because it's children will forever be children and we apply a lot of discipline in there. We do not allow learners to do anything which will infringe on the value that our learners get from each and every class. So we are very careful about that. We've put um, all sorts of measures in place to ensure that everybody gets all the academic value that they possibly can out of each of our classes. But we, with regard to class size, there is, there is no issue with us with class size. We don't see that um, any of those would impact on what we offer. In fact, we are aligned to offering our services to a multitude of learners seamlessly so that they can get all of the value that they, are, that they expect from us. Okay, let's see if there are more that are, that I can quickly grab from here whilst I've got the floor garden. Right. Um, right, Sharon says, are the online classes included into the annual package? Why is there additional fees for online on your website? Sharon, you will see on our website under our products, there are so many products that you could choose from. And the reason for that is that we know Distance education families have different, have different needs. And for that reason, we have created products that you can use the way that you would like to use them. Sorry, it's, those are all my work colleagues replying and getting excited about all the products that I'm talking about. Um, so what we do is we created products for you to use as you see fit. I think the most complete product that offers the most complete solution for you is probably our IEB aligned product or our CAPS aligned product. And Sharon, that means that all the online classes are included in there. All the assessment is included in there. 
the study content, the study material is included in there. So that is a full and complete package and that's where you get the most support. Probably you've seen the online are for those who would like to use a more eclectic kind of home education or distance education where you choose your own syllabus. You hunt here, you hunt there until you find the stuff that you would like to use in your home to help the kids. And probably then is where you got to the online part where it's sold as a separate product. So that's if you feel that the content that you have, the study material that you have, you love that, but you'd like to supplement that with online videos then that probably would suit you as well. In addition to that, we have what we call the express product. That's where you say, listen, we are a very seasoned home education company. Oh, listen to me, company, of course you're a company. Home education family. We know that we use the content that we want. We've got, we use YouTube, we use Khan Academy, we use um, all of these other resources, we're happy with that. But what we do need is assessment. And then the product that, we, that you are looking for is the express product. That's where we put all the assessment in one condensed little package for you. And you can purchase that and you can use that as you wish. In other words, I'm not with, with uh, timelines does not hold me back. Schedules does not hold me back. I can use my end of term one test whenever I want. I can use my mid-year exam whenever I want. That does not preclude you from getting a final end of year report because in addition to that, you can just add the report to go. That means I can use Express throughout the year. I can assess my child on my own. I can mark everything on my own. Everybody's happy. But if I would like a report at the end, uh, end of the year, I would enroll for my report to go. So Sharon, I hope I've shown you that there are so many products that you can use and that you can apply and use in your family to fit your own lifestyle. Do not be constricted into, I've got only choose this product or that product. Take the liberty of browsing our website and to look at especially the option that says, would this suit me? And look under, would this suit me? If those pointers fits within your family and then choose the product with, with, with which you are mostly aligned. Sharon also says, do we supply lesson plans to follow or can we follow our child's weekly progress on the Sharon, you're absolutely right. We do supply you with a work schedule, but that's a broad outline. In other words, we tell you, this is if we would give you a blueprint of the academics throughout the year, this is what it looks like. In term one, you need to do this. In term two, you need to do this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Does that mean I am bound by it? No, Sharon, you're not you are bound by the best interest of your own child. In other words, you would look at the needs of your own child and then adapt that curriculum or that schedule to fit within your own family. That's the most important part. Now, again, let's talk about products. How does that fit, this fit into the product? If you don't want timelines, if you don't want constraints on when you do what, you don't want constraints on when do, would you like to write an exam, do not choose the IB aligned one, but choose something like the Express because then there are no due dates. So again, going back to our products, carefully choose the ones that will fit within your lifestyle. Okay, Karen, I think I've, I'm almost done with mine. I'm sure somebody else has got something to contribute. I think I'm going to run through the questions from the top to the bottom, and then we can jump between the panelists to answer the questions. Then we know that we've covered them all. Um, and I think you spoke about the individual attention. Colleen has addressed that. And then also in terms of, um, she's spoken to you about Liesl. Liesl has got individual Skypes today, or not Skype sessions, Zoom sessions. So there's a perfect example of what we do to support the individual. Liesl, as Colleen said, is the Brainline mentor. So she is um, a teacher. She's an experienced teacher. She's a remedial teacher with a lot of subject knowledge and experience as well. And in her role as a mentor, she is there to support both the students and the parents. So if I, as a student, feel totally overwhelmed, but what is overwhelming me is something that I just don't at this stage feel I can chat to my mom about. And most of the students who do that are ones who don't want their parents to worry about them. Then there is a confidentiality agreement, which is signed between Liesl and the parents to say, that you allow her to communicate with your children and then obviously for that confidentiality to be held 
But there is always a proviso in anything like this, in any teacher-student situation. And that is where there is something which is serious and which is life-threatening, obviously would be shared via the correct channels. So Liesl is there to support the student who one day just wakes up and feels, you know what, it's exams. Mom's asking me how far my studies are. Dad's saying, um, what are your marks looking like? It's bitterly cold and I hate the winter and it's rainy and this is just too much. I need an ear and this ear has got to be outside this, this house today. And that's the time that they can schedule a session with Liesl to have a discussion with her like she's having right at this moment. And that's why she hasn't joined us on the panel today. So that individual attention is there. Then also in terms of the academic part, obviously in the class situation, as Colleen has explained, and as Adele will talk to you more about the classes and how they function, in the class situation, the student can ask questions. So they have a chat similar to what you have now. And because we're using the same platform that we would be using, and the students can therefore ask questions. So they can type their questions out, they can type them privately so that only the teacher sees them. They can email the teacher for support, et cetera. I think one thing that is very important in terms of this environment is to remember that we are not, and there are different definitions for each of these. And, and looking at the social media, there are so many new um, entities popping up and calling themselves either cloud schools or home schools or distance schools, or I'm, I'm getting confused at how many there are at the moment. Um, and, and they're all brand new and they, they all, uh, I'm slightly confused about how they're going to get everything done overnight and, and, and uh, wish them well. But I think the one important thing that one has to remember is if you're going to go for a true online school that is going to offer you in the high school and in the junior school, a very fixed schedule, and a, a book in which we're going to mark off attendance and say, Johnny was here, Peter wasn't. This is the second time Johnny is here. This is or not here and so on. That is not what we are aiming at. The concept of home or distance schooling from the home remains that the parent is in, integrally involved. Absolutely. The parent has to know what is happening. I've seen a question where a parent has said, I'm not sure that I'm going to know what's happening and something's left out and we'll address that. So here's the, the, the situation in terms of we have for the senior school, we have a timetable. Adele will discuss the detail, but they have an option. Do they want to attend the class live or would they prefer to watch it? on a video basis afterwards. A lot of students, and this Liesl picks up as well, a lot of students find it very difficult to be able to follow the work from A to B for 40 minutes. They might find that they need to follow a piece, pause, rethink it, rework it, go through it in their textbook, unpause and continue. And that is the way in which, again, one is addressing what each individual need is, even though we're using technology. So they have a choice. Do you want to watch the videos or do you want to attend live? And either way, if you have chosen the aligned system, you have access to the teacher. What is very important to remember, and this comes in in terms of assessment and a lot of queries I get, is my child doesn't understand section A, or doesn't understand vectors. Can it please help? For individual attention like that, where it's such intense, intense, a whole topic is missing. We have the videos, we have support, but it is not possible to support each individual as it would be if one was having one-on-one -on -one tutor sessions. That is very, very different. And there is no online situation which can offer one-on-one -on -one tutor situations as well as the whole class with one teacher. Just the numbers say it to us. If, you know, I used to say when I taught in class, and I think this brings a little bit of perspective to it as well, you know, there's a question sometimes that comes up of, will my child be able to ask a question? If I teach for 30 minutes and I have 30 bodies in my physical brick classroom, and each one wants one minute of attention, then nobody has had any collective attention. 30 kids, one minute, half an hour is gone. So one's got to be very careful to, to look at the, the manner in which we can, we can provide that. Um, I'm going to ask you, Adele, to address this in terms of the, the teaching method that the teachers use and Gada, you with the, the juniors, please. Because I think it's a very important thing that people keep asking, what happens to my child? Is it going to get lost, yes or no? Adele? 
Okay, so basically what we do is we have an online portal with a qualified teacher. So I'm, for instance, in the mathematics department. So what I'll do is I'll send a link to our students via our platform that they can access in any time they want to. And the links are being given in advance. So they know exactly when class will be. We have a fixed time schedule. So for Mondays, eight o'clock, there's mathematics for grade eight. So every Monday at eight o'clock, we have mathematics for grade eight. The number of classes differ per subject, depending on the, the load of work and the amount of time that we have for our teachers. So for mathematics, we try to put a little bit more focus on, especially for other learning subjects like science and biology as well, or the life sciences. And we try to do at least three lessons a week. So if there's three lessons for grade eight mathematics, for example, we do them constantly the same time every week. So eight o'clock Mondays, eight o'clock Wednesdays, eight o'clock Fridays, for example. And then every week it will be the same. So for that 45 minutes, they have access to a qualified teacher to help them with a specific content piece of the curriculum. We cannot cover the whole curriculum due to time limitations and we have a limited time in the day. And so we work with specific type um, content that we pick from the curriculum. All our teachers are qualified and specialists in the subject. So they pick the type of topics that we feel that students normally struggle with or that they use or they need for assessments. And say, for instance, we do fractions, we kick, ch um, choose that topic and then we explain and we totally rip it apart in class and so that students, when they leave the class, know exactly what will happen when they get something on fractions. The lessons are then being recorded while we do the class and it will be available for students to watch on a later time. So if they need to, they can watch the video in the class afterwards, like as Corin told you, that if they can't concentrate for the whole 45 minutes, they have time to stop or pause the video and go on later. The, also the reason that we um, do not specifically um, it's a must to attend classes, but we'd like you to, is that some students um, have the concentration thing. And then the other thing is that um, when we have our live classes, the kids are able to uh, interact with the teacher. So they can be able to chat like you're doing with us now. They can chat. They can do it either by writing in the, in the chat option in the, in the box, or they can put on their mic, put up their hand and ask the teacher. So there's a verbal communication, there's a visual communication, or they can write it as well. And also we have the opportunity for students to contact our teachers online um, with a message, or they can send them an email and the teacher can get back to them as well. Um, I think the thing is with our online school that makes it a little bit more um, specialized is the fact that we have a continuous contact with our students um, not normally on a daily basis, but we try to keep it as constant as possible so that they know Monday mornings, eight o'clock, I have maths. So every Monday when I reach my teacher, I know exactly what I'm going to do. The planning is there so that we can keep um, track of our academics. Corin, I think I've answered what you've asked. If Gada, if you will go on and, and put the junior school the same perspective. Okay, for grade one to seven, we also, actually for grade four to seven, we also have online classes in Afrikaans, English and maths, but we only target the topics that the learners struggle with. Uh, for grade one to seven, um, a screen can never take the place of a person and uh, the human factor is very necessary in their lives. Therefore, you, you quickly lose a child um, if you put him in front of a 2D uh, a screen and we have some of the we have lessons and I can quickly see how they start wandering off and asking questions that's not on on the topic like teacher you have nice earrings or teacher how's your I can't see your pants what does your pants look like so uh, things that actually doesn't have anything to do with the lesson. So the human factor is very important for grade one to seven. Therefore, we have limited online classes in Afrikaans, English and maths on the specific topics, but we have a lot of pre-recorded maths classes. And for the same reason that Adela has explained that the learner can stop and the parent can stop and you can pause and rewind and look at it again. Um, 
I am the contact person and if you should you need anything with regards to um, subject info or um, want to let me know that there's something specific that your child struggles with and we can maybe target it in the next lesson or have a pre-recording made then you are welcome to contact me but I also saw a question that how um, involve a parent should be very much involved with grade one to seven the, the parent should be the um, responsible one and not not the learner and then Sharon asked do you have dedicated subject teachers per subject or does a single teacher teach all subjects per grade we have for the three different subjects Afrikaans English and maths we have three different teachers um, doing um, the online classes they uh, we contract them to do that but I'm the one the person at Brainline you may contact with any um, academic um, queries. Awesome thanks Gerda I think that that says um, a lot to everybody. Adele wants to add something and then I'll just after that I also want to just add something about the uh, an additional aspect coming from the mentor side Adele. Yes I'd like to just add for the for the prior, uh, high school for grade 8 to um, 12 we, our grade eight and nine classes are separately in Afrikaans and English. So we have like mathematics in Antons Viskunde for grade 8 and 9. And we try to do that as well for grade 10 and 11. But we are incorporating more double medium standards in grade 11 and 12 due to the fact that we need to prepare our students. And that's also the outcome of IB for after school. So um, due to the fact that English is our main language out there, we would like to um, prepare students for that. But we skip the African students off. We try well to in the most of the faculties to be in two tales and to be able to student the tales to be able 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 to be in um, fysische wetenskap, die leer leervakke wat belangrijk is vir die universiteitstoelating, bietjie meer in 'n week te doen. So, so we try to um, take more um, contact time with subjects that we feel is necessary for university um, studies, but we do not um, do less of the rest. So we try to accommodate as much as possible interaction. Um, you'll also find that for grade eight nines, we try not to overload them because they're still young and they need. Um, also, like Gerda said, you can see when the concentration level um, is dipping. So we try to stick to our 40 minute lessons, but we don't overload them for eight to five lesson, um, lessons the whole day. So we keep it minimal. But as you go to the higher grades 10, 11 and 12, you'll see that the timetable is a little bit more full because we have much more subjects that we need to cover except Afrikaans, English and mathematics. Thanks, Colin. Awesome, great. And then I think something that I want to add here as well, um, is again the concern that everybody has is sort of the socializing part and then it comes back to is there somebody that my child is going to identify um, with and i think the identification part here is very important as Gerda says mom and dad are going to be the primary person and i think it's very important for us all to remember that if we go and look at what the requirements are and i've seen there have been a few people talking about um, accreditation and whether we um are registered with the DBE and so on, and we can talk about that in a minute. But I think very important to here comes out that idea that that mom and dad are by law required when the child is of school going age, in other words, under 16 or up to grade nine, the, and one decides to homeschool, that by law it is the parent who takes that responsibility. The second part by law is that if I as a parent decide that I want to homeschool my child, I have to accept that I have a responsibility to my child and to their human rights to ensure that there is a certain standard to which I will have them educated then. How I do it is then my choice. I've taken that upon my shoulders. But it is the government's and the Department of Basic Education's responsibility to ensure that I'm not a mom who decides that I'm only going to teach my child languages um, they're going to be excellent. They're going to be able to speak 10 languages. But you know what? I really think maths is totally silly. Whoever uses maths in their life again, uh, all of us. But yes, I, that's, that might be me as a parent. And therefore, I decide that I'm going to use a very eclectic manner and I'm just going to do it on my own. Choose a little bit here, a little bit there. And then hopefully when my child wants to go and enter the, the world of work, they're going to be able to do so. 
And obviously that is not going to happen. And that is where the government then says that even if my child is then um, being homeschooled by me and I have a choice of what um, I would like to do and how I would like to address this, um, it's very important that I have to be able to prove that I have not actually, um, what's the right word to say, that I have not gone against my child's human rights. It's belangrijk that ek my kind sy mense recht in die geskend het door hom te homeschool nie. Ek moet seker maak dat wat ook al ek doen, voldoen aan die minimum van wat hy in die school sal gekry het. En omdat ons in Suid-Afrika is, dan aan die minimum wat hy in die Suid-Afrikaanse school sal gekry het. En dit is waar jou diensverskaffer inkom. Wat baie belangrik is vir die diensverskaffer dan, is that as the service provider, or as a parent, you have to choose a service provider who can provide you with valid and reliable assessment. Should COVID, for example, pass and parents decide they want to move their children back into a school or for whatever other reason they want to do so, they need to be able to move their child back to school and the school must accept the child on the level that they are because they can cope. And not just because I as parents say, but I think I did an awesome job as a, as, as a mom. So there it is important to look at the assessment components that go along with it. And that is where you as parent are so involved and BrainLine becomes your service provider. So in the, in the junior area, we are not the child's um, um, predominant um, content provider. We are your assessment provider and we guide you with the content because we know what the requirements are. And that is where Gada and her team in the juniors will be so very intensely involved with that. What is also important then is that, and I do understand that some of the kids actually want to get to know some of their friends. They want to know, have I got a friend? Have I, um, is there somebody else doing this? And that is where we bring in extra sessions, which then are scheduled very regularly um, by Liesl with the, the students in their different age groups. For the small juniors, she does it in English and Afrikaans separately. And they have fun times. They have some fun sessions. They, for example, start every week with a session with teacher Liesl. And they love calling her teacher Liesl because they have that, that sort of week. Other kids talk and they say, but I get the yifra, but it's yeah, you get the mama. And mamas is always slim, so that's the yifra is. Joch, we have it all overleef. One of the times that my kids have said, but my yifra see. And we've all had that, but my teacher says. And that's nice for them to be able to associate. So there in the junior school, they'll probably associate with Gerda and to a certain extent a little bit with Liesl as well. And then she'll have these sessions where they would typically have that which they would do in the, the class situation, where they would on a Monday morning say, right, it's Monday. What day was yesterday? How many days in a week? What month is it? What, what's the weather where you live? Do their weather chart, do their news, have a little bit of fun, do some counting, um, do some phonics, whatever it is that, that they're working on at that moment that she links to it. So yes, there again, there's that individuality which we do pay attention to. And if you want to join that, um, we always advertise it very clearly on our system once you are a client. But obviously you can contact Liesl. She's always easy to contact because it's mentor in Afrikaans work, mentor, M-E-N-T-O-R at brainline.com. So I think that one is quite important. Um, I'm going to run through the others from the top again. Um, I think Colleen has already clarified the 80 Rand cloud classes. So the cloud class fee, if you choose the full um, IB aligned product is always included. There's no extra hidden costs there whatsoever. So I think that one is covered. That would only be if I decided that I just wanted the classes as an add on to the um, BrainLine Express. Um, the accessing about the videos, I think um, Adele, we can just now, I'll give you an opportunity and you can perhaps just show on Brain Online where everything is, because I think that's very important for everybody to access. So Gerda can perhaps show you on the juniors, because I know some of the junior people sometimes ask, where do I get my assessments? And how do I know where my timetable is specifically with the juniors? Gerda can perhaps do that. And Adele, if you would like to show them then in the subjects, what the subjects look like on Brain Online, just as a quick way to find everything, I think then that one will then be handled as well. The next one was, would we be able to share the child's login details with an independent tutor so that they can assist with online uh, learning? Or is there an alternative way for parents or tutors to prepare and assist? This is sort of a bit of a legal one. Um, we give you, it's like me, you're having a banking pin and I 
I have got this pin with all this access to my child um, and to my child's details and I give it to somebody else. One's got to be very, very careful with that. Um, it's a decision which you as a parent would have to make. Um, our standard agreement does refer to it, but that is a choice which you as, as a parent would make. There are some parents who choose to do that. I, however, would um, be very careful with having the emails which come off our system being sent to the tutors. Um, we very often find that we would, or well, not very often, but we have found, let's rather word it that way, ons het al gekry, dat daar mense sal wees waar daar uh, tutor betrokke was en die ma gooi haar hande op en sê, hoe op aarde kan my kind te nol gekry het? My kind het dan al sy of haar take gedoen. Sy het vir my gesê en dan kom hulle achter, niemand het ooit eers ingelaag en gekyk daarna nie. So that really is, is very important not to lose that control. If you want to share the control, I think that's one thing. Colleen, would you like to add anything on to the sharing of the passwords? Everybody goes like that. This is, we're so good at sign language, aren't we? This, <laughs> okay, cool. Yes, um, it is important that parents realize that they are the licensed end users of the study material um, as far as the publishers goes. And the publishers are really nervous about copyright and copywriting issues. And then there is um, a little act that's called the Popey Act. Um, your personal information, how do I share that and with whom do I share that? And as Brainard, we are very cognizant of that fact. So as you said, Karen, very rightly, parents just need to take care. And as they enroll on our Brain Online, online enrollment system, they will find there's a little piece of paper where you can provide consent, your consent, to a third party to view any of the information on the learner management system. So from us, uh, from our side, if you give permission to that third party, then it's fine with us. But you have to know and you have to trust that person to make sure that you um, give it to the right people. But yes, if you sign such a third party agreement, then it's fine with us. Then we have it in writing that you are okay with that. Thank you. Um, I think that answers that one completely. And then I think there's quite a little bit um, about people who want to know what happens if my child joins Brainline now and passing. So from an assessment aspect, I'm going to give you the assessment aspect, and then I'm going to hand over to Adele and Khada in terms of how, how, how does my child catch up realistically. In terms of assessment, it's very important that we as Brainline um, share with you that we see ourselves as um, not only very um, reliant or not very reliant, very proud of our reputation um, and the fact that our assessment is very highly regarded. Um, we have teachers who are desperate to actually teach and work for us coming from very, very esteemed schools. And that tells me that they are very much impressed with what we are doing in terms of our teaching and also our assessment and to be associated with us. What however is very important is that we do not want to ever take a child who has moved from one school to another, especially at the moment, we do understand that, that a lot of the people who are looking at alternatives at the moment are looking to these alternatives due to COVID-19. It's a reality. As Colleen often says, we're also tired of the word. We just wish there was a different word. Um, can, they, can they give us a new synonym that doesn't just make us feel, ugh, because I think that's sort of started to happen. It's, it's becoming old and it's, and it's going to be a part of our lives for a long time. So we do understand that it's put in tremendous amount of stress on families, financially, emotionally, people um, where somebody in the family hasn't been able to see somebody else for a long time, visit them, or then where somebody has been ill and people have passed away. And we know that that has been happening within our brain line family as well. So we do understand that. And from the assessment aspect side, therefore, anybody who joins at this stage for the whole of cycle two will be excluded. In other words, exclusion means you do not get a zero. It means you do not have to do the assessments now. You get excluded automatically from all of them. Here and there, there is a student who's come from a school who feels, you know, but, but, but I think I'm, I'm on par. I think I want to 
actually write these exams. I want to benchmark myself. I want to see how I'm coping. And in doing so, they are absolutely welcome to do so. And should their marks be good enough and they want them to carry through, wonderful. Because then they are contributing to their year mark, which is commonly known as the SBA. We do need an SBA. And at the moment, I'm not talking about grade 12. I'm talking up to grade 12. So we will exclude them and give them chance to catch up. To us, it's really important that this child catches up on everything that they have not got to our level. We do know that the CAPS curriculum, which is the basis on which even the IEB has based the curriculum, which has been adapted by the IEB, to be closer to something like the type of assessment, definitely the assessment, but even the content to be closer to that of, for example, Cambridge. So it will happen that students will move from one school to another and say, wow, this is different. In languages, it's going to happen because they're going to be books where my assessment team will be assessing Romeo and Juliet, but your child in their school did Anthony and Cleopatra. It would obviously happen. And there is no way we can expect them to sit down, join us, and two weeks later write an exam on Anthony and Cleopatra. So what we will be doing is we will be assessing these students and looking at what we need to complete a full SBA, a year mark, to ensure that they have that background knowledge which they need. Also, that during exams, one must look at very carefully and all assessment always. Assessment is not just a set of marks to say you passed. It is a benchmark to measure yourself and to approve upon. So if a student wants to use them as a benchmark, welcome to do so, but we will not fail anybody at this stage because they join us at all. It will also mean, obviously, that in grade 12, there will be some catching up to do and quite soon to do it. In terms of the other grades, it would mean that they would typically grade 8 to 11 have until round about November when the year-end exams will start to be able to catch up on what Brainline has done until now. And then obviously in cycle three to complete and work with us at our um, speed and tempo. Um, so with us in the cyclus three, what then for you a quartal, maybe so be is, um, to work om zeker te maak dat hulle daar die assesserings wel kan doen. En dan die rest van die tijd te gebruik tot die eindexamen om zeker te maak dat hulle die werk kan dek. Now it's also very nice because in the structure that our teachers give you with Adele, um, there is a work schedule and on the work schedule it tells you and it's not possible to say day by day what to do. This year has been an absolute perfect example. There is no point in saying you have to cover on day one of week one this work and day two of week two because you didn't have a day one of week one at the beginning of the year. So it will show you what work will be covered, for example, in cycle three, what work will be covered in the exams at the end of the year. Everybody always wants a demarcation, a afbakening, a more fra altijd daarvoor. A afbakening is eigenlijk van die begin van die jaar op a brain line beskikbaar, want dus sef jou precies wat er hoofstukke gedek word. En is ook belangrijk om te weet dat die IEB se, se assessering baie geintegreerd is. The IEB has very integrated assessment. So instead of saying there will be five marks on this and two marks on that, we can't really do that because the questions are very often intertwined. Because of that, we will tell you which chapters and which sections in those chapters will be covered and if there's something that can be left out completely. So yes, your child of absolutely has a chance of passing this year and not only of passing your child has a chance of doing very well it's important to remember that in the uh, grades eight and nine um, the year-end exam counts approximately 60 percent in the year mark 40. so can you see why i'm not putting an emphasis on a june exam in fact we're not even going to call them june exams ever again we're going to call them a, a cycle two test series because that is all they are they have tests they, they they're not more important than the cycle one test they're not more important than the cycle three test and for the grade 12 specifically cycle three the prelim is the most important so everybody there have been a number of these questions yes most definitely they can complete their year they can even excel during the year and here comes the best part and that is where adele's teachers have all been recording their lessons so they're not left to their son themselves. They've got the work schedule to see exactly what was covered in cycle one. They've got the assessments from my company. They can see the assessments. They can see the marking guidelines, the memos. In alle kan alle self assessier. So, so is alle die die werk wil gaan, 
het hulle die werk om na te kyk, die toetsen, die taken, en hulle kan sien, hy, so ek hierdie kon gedoen het, en dit is vir hulle een richtlijn, want die standaard wat ons handhaaf is, standard that we, have, that we maintain in cycle one, is the standard that we maintain at the end of the year. It doesn't suddenly become more difficult, it's just a larger volume of work, but they can be working on that gradually the whole time in between as well. There has been a question, um, I didn't see it here today, but it's come up a lot. Why does Brainline have June exams? Break away from the idea of exams and see them as tests in small bite sizes. It's very important, especially for grade 12, to understand that what has happened with the COVID plan that has been released is that the number of assessments have been decreased by approximately one in every subject. And then it means that the prelim exam counts more. Some of the prelim exams in some of the schools are going to count 50% of the year mark. We don't want to do that to our children because that is incredible stress. So we are working at the whole pace. We've been available the whole time, but we take into consideration if they are new. Adele, anything that you would like to add there in terms of them passing? And then I think Gerda as well, because this is a concern for parents. I think it's the biggest concern. Yes, Goran, there's a few things that I'd like to quickly touch on. The first thing is, if you can just give me the share rights from your site, Goran. Yeah. Um, I'll show you the Brain Online site just now. Um, there's been a few questions with regards to that. So first of all, we use Moodle and we have, at the moment, we're using Zoom for our portal for classes online. And all the recordings are um, MP4 files. So we load them on our um, um, platform. I'll show you just now. And so they are available to all students. So current videos are all there. All the videos from cycle one onwards are there. Um, let me quickly show that you. I'll share my screen. You'll be able to see it. I hope so. Karen, can you see? Yep. Okay, so this is my platform. I'm just going to show you a little bit of it. Um, this is um, for my subject, Mathematical Literacy Grade 12. So obviously we have our content where you can contact our teacher. Then we have resources. Under these resources, we give you past papers for, for some of the years. We pick which years we can give to you. We give you um, IEB exams for the grade 12 especially with memorandums. Then I like in my subject, and remember this is subject specific. So some teachers give more, some teachers will give a little bit less, but more of us, we will share what we want you to have a look at where we think it's important. Uh, videos that I personally made in specific topics that I share with my students for further um, reference. Then I have give them formula sheets or sketches. I have external videos that I can share to them. Then under classes, we have our timetables. I share my notes before the time with students so that they can print it out and use it during class time with me. And also because I like my students to come to class prepared. So when I'm doing a class, let's say on Pythagoras, I will give them the notes 24 hours in advance so that you can print them out. And I'd like them to go through one or two of the questions. So I'll guide them through in the notes, which ones they must do so that they come to class a little bit prepared. And that's why we always tell you that homeschooling is not just receiving, it's also giving from your side. So you have to put in time on your own and try to work through the work as well, because um, together we, you will make the, we will then make the difference. And then I'm giving you worksheets. And as you can see, here's all my links for my different classes. So I'm loading on the classes and these are only for cycle two now. I'm loading the links in advance so students have access to them um, on the specific time, obviously. And then in my folder, I've loaded all my videos. So cycle one, cycle to all my recordings that for lessons that have been done. So these are MP4s that you can download easily and, um, uh, and watch them online if you like, so that you can do them on the time that you want to. So you can revisit all the videos um, as you go through the work. Um, and then what Okoran also said about the assessments, remember what, what we are assessing. Formal assessment means that we're doing tests and exams and tasks throughout a year, depending on the subject. And those assessments only count a small part towards your promotional mark at the end of the year. And those, those tasks are not just a mere number that Karen is referring to. It's, it's for you a guideline of how you, you um, go through your work. Are you on pace? 
is there something that's a hiccup? Is there a hole that you need to cover? And in that way, you can easily get support from your teacher. So if you write your task and you see that you, you're tremendously well in this, you know that you're okay and you can just revise for a further assessment. So that's why we try to exempt from cycle two, if possible, because that level of stress to cover all the work, you are in a school where some of the work has not been covered yet, or we didn't cover something that you've done to just um, get rid of all those problems for you, we're exempting you. Because that small amount of exam that you should be writing is not going to make you pass or not pass. Um, we'll rather um, prepare you for the final exams when you get there. Karen, is there something else? Right, I think that's absolutely perfect. I think perhaps what some of the people thought of with the recordings is in the past, um, like last year and before, there used to be after um, every test, we used to have a video. We've okay. replaced those with the live classes. So there's yeah, so, so much more now than there used to be. And obviously they will cover then the content and the, and the catches in the question papers as well. So Maybe great. I can... Maybe I can just pick up on that as well. So um, additionally to our normal live classes that we do, um, our assessment company is setting our assessments and then we as teachers get feedback from that. So we take the test and then we discuss it in class with students and then we record that. So we're actually like a walking live memo, if you can put it in straight terms, um, not just merely giving you a memo on paper. So we discuss the memo and we get feedback from children or the students towards what they struggle with so that we can pick up on that in the next class. So when we schedule our classes, we have certain topics that we pick out from the syllabus that we want to do from the curriculum. But for me, for instance, in my class, I like to keep one lesson open now and then for pickup when I get um, feedback from students when they struggle with something so that I have like an open class where I can discuss certain topics. Thanks, Gordon. Thank you, Gerda. Okay, our subject pages for the primary school basically look the same. And on the question, will the learner be able to catch up? Yes, I think in the primary school, a lot easier maybe. So what we do is when learners, um, learners who have been enrolling during May and now, we exempt them from the cycle two exam and they can take the time and get used to the system. You have access to all the papers and the memos later on, so they can do the paper as a revision and you can self-assess and see um, what they need to um, do as a revision before starting with uh, cycle three. And then you can jump in in cycle three and start joining us with uh, uh, submitting tasks and tests in cycle three. And the learners won't be penalized at all for not for not writing the um, the um, cycle two assessment we must stop focusing on assessment and seeing it as measuring what they are able to do and rather see what they need some more attention in so yeah no it's very possible to catch up and um, I, we have a lot of clients enrolling now and some of them are attempting the june exam and um, it's going quite well. And then I saw a question about learning barriers in grade um, in the primary school. Yes, if you have a report from a psychologist or uh, any um, neurologist or a therapist with recommendations, that is Liesl's, um, um, she uh, attend to learning disabilities and um, learners with special needs. So yes, we do do, do accommodation according to the recommendation of the uh, professional from which we get the um, report. Awesome, thanks Gerda. What I can also mention is that the IB actually, um, it's very important for these specific accommodations, for the accommodations that we have with other words for kids with learning problems, of dit welke probleem ook al is wat het veroorzaak, het kan angst wees, dit kan specifiek iets wees met cijfers, dit kan iets met lees wees, kan dyslexie wees, al soveel verskillende dinge. So all these different accommodations, um, Liesl goes through the process, there are specific documents which need to be completed. Each of the examining bodies like the IB or the Department of Education decides which documents they need for their panels of specialists to, to make the final decisions. 
So we um, guide you even with invigilation, et cetera, what needs to happen with that type of student who then has these special accommodations. So absolutely, as Khada said, if you have any queries there, specifically email mentor at, Le at, at Liesl. Okay, that's clever. Mentor at brainline.com and Liesl will assist you with those. Um, it's also very important that now for this year, um, where we have grade 12s that might be coming to us from Department of Basic Education Schools, but I'm going to imagine that from a start school, of course, a state school, not a private school. As so, iemand na ons toe oorkom op hierdie stadium, is dit belangrik om te weet dat daai akkommoderings sal deurgedra word. So iemand wat graad 12 akkommodering gehad het by die Departement van Onderwijs in 'n staatsskool, hoef nie nou skielik aansoek te doen by die by die DBE nie, ag by die IB nie. Ons sal daai self dit julle gaan die inligting vir Liesel gee, you'll give her the info and it'll it'll carry through. But additionally, on top of that, realizing that there are students and that COVID has created a lot of different situations and students moving around from one department to another, from one examining body to another. Provinces, kids have got stuck in a province with while they were visiting granny and now, okay, well, that's it. You're staying you know, at the moment because mom and dad have no way to look after you once you go back to them again. That type of thing. The IB has extended the um, dates um, until which they will consider accommodation. So, as there's so much is the problem is contact Liesl dring and they have the right to get it out. They have given us extra time to get this type of good to get on the screen, because they are aware of it. That as students are what they are moving from the one school system to the other, and again, it is to understand it. It is not just for it to be easier to make, it is just for it to be easier to make. So, I think it is also a very important thing. Ek sien daar is heel wat mense wat vraag, there are a number of people who have asked about um, the cost, etc, etc. Um, Rosa Marie Cornier, she is also a panelist, um, she has already posted for you, and I'm just going to post it again now, that the minute you want to know about exact costs, please look at our public website, brainline.com, because there are so many different options to look at. It'll give you a nice idea of what you want, especially with what we've done now. And then on top of that, you can then email Rosie at rcornierbrainline.com. I've just sent it through. And then she will assist you because definitely there are people that have asked us um, about having somebody who has um, twins and about uh, joining us this late in the year, et cetera, et cetera. There's definitely discount. There's, it's actually an awesome discount. I wasn't saying this loudly because Rosie's going to hear me and I'm part of the team. So I shouldn't be sharing the secret with you. But it actually is awesome because remember, you're still getting the whole year's teaching, the whole year's assessments, everything online. It's all there for you. You're not being excluded from any of the content that, that has been shared with all the students, yet there is a very good discount. So I think that is a, is a great option. Um, I think we've gone through a lot of that. There's been one that was asked about the uh, pass rate of students. I know that's very important to, pay, to teach uh, to parents. Obviously, I don't want to enroll my child somewhere. And as I said just now, we see brain lines popping up, but not calling themselves brain lines. And they definitely can't. Popping up all over and, and wanting to say, bring your child to us. I think Brainline is very proud of our pass rate, but I also think one has to look at a pass rate the same way that um, Adele and Gerda and Colleen and I have been re-emphasizing what the concept of assessment is. It, there's a very similar concept in terms of pass rate. When we talk about pass rate, ons van slagcijfer praat en praat ons gewoon van wat gebeur in graad 12. Want ons sien allemaal met angst uit na die einde van die jaar as die korante gaan kom en dan gaan hulle die skole so in a ranking list sit. They're going to rank all the schools and tell us this is the best high school in this province and this is the best one overall because all their kids at least had one distinction each and they had a 100% pass rate, etc., etc. For those of us who've been in teaching long enough, we unfortunately know that there's a little twist in the towel. Not with all the schools, but with many of the schools. If a student at the end of grade 11 is struggling with some subjects, they are very often in a school environment recommended to change their subject. And recommended, kindly, compulsory, change your subject. At Brainline, we will take into consideration, and there Liesl comes into it a lot again, in terms of is this the right subject for this child to take? Or is there unnecessary stress? What are you going to do with the subject? 
if I want to decide that I specifically am absolutely, I'm a languages person and I want to go into journalism and my journalism is going to link to be linked to politics, etc. Do I really need to take physical sciences? And that I, as a physical scientist and as a teacher of physical sciences, I'm asking. Because there are kids who don't have that ability, just the way I don't have the ability to remember dates and names and would be a disaster in history. So yes, we do take that type of thing into account and we make suggestions, but we do never ever refuse a student from writing the subject of his choice and his parents' choice. In a school, change your subject. In a school, you didn't want to change your subject. You're in grade 12. You've written the June exam. Can you see your report is sitting on 30%? I think you're going to mess up our 100% pass rate. Um, I think it would be great if you enrolled as a private candidate. And this really happens in the real life. So students then don't write the exam as a student of a specific school. They write it as a private candidate. And this happens a lot with anybody who stands a chance of failing. And Adele, who's been in the school environments with me, will fully agree. Harder, everybody's going to agree with me. This is really what happens. Brainline never does that. In fact, we take and become the lifeline for students who are in that type of situation and say, you're welcome with us. And we will put in our everything to help you to do the best that you possibly can and to grow as much as you can. So when we at Brainline don't have a 100% pass rate and we don't have a 96% pass rate, we're proud of our pass rate because we know that every single child has had the opportunity to complete a grade 12 with the subjects of their choice and with our support. When Brainline started um, and moved to the IEB, the pass rate was not what we wanted it to be. And we've built it up gradually and, and we've sort of had a dream in our minds of, of getting to our 80% and really feeling that 80% would mean that we've given all these kids a really good chance to make it. And I can proudly say with the rest of us as a team that at the end of ni uh, 19, that will be very long ago, at the end of 2019, we actually had an 85 point something percent pass rate, which is absolutely awesome. And that goes to attest to literally the standard that we are maintaining and the support that we are giving. So I think that answers the, the pass rate part. I think that's all fine. So I'm going to click that one done. Um, there was a registration. Do we register our children with the Department of Education from grade one? And do we need to submit the assessments and reports with them every year? I'm going to ask Colleen to answer this one because there are some more like this later on. And I found it very interesting yesterday to read um, a statement by the Department of Basic Education, actually quoting the minister directly as saying, if you don't want to take your child back to school, you're welcome to homeschool them. She actually used the words. But Colleen is going to give you the background to the, the law matters. Yes, indeed. Lots to say, lots to discuss on registration for home education. Okay, let's start at the beginning. When I decide to home educate my child, the SOSA Act, which is the South African Schools Act, says that I'm supposed to register my child for home education if my child is of school compulsory age. Now, a child is considered to be of school compulsory age between the age of seven and 15, or grade nine, whichever comes first. So if my child is in that age bracket, it'll mean that I need to register my child with the different departments of education. And as I'm speaking now, I'm going to quickly copy and paste the link where you can find all the registration details with the various departments in your specific area. Now, they differ. Some of them um, are easy to access and it's a simple online enrollment and others are not so easy to access and those mean that you have to download a, a form and then fill in a form. You will find the link in the chat forum now in the various provinces. So depending on what, where you are, that is the process that they determine should happen. Now, normally one would, if you look at the regulations, one would expect them to answer within 30 days to say, whether they agree with you that home education is in the interest of your child and whether they approve of such an application. Now, we are living in different times. We are living in the COVID-19 times or the coronavirus times. And 
I am really doubtful whether the Department of Education will consider it not to be in the interest of your own child. <coughs> Sorry, forgive me for that one. To register your child for home education. So I don't expect them to turn your application down. That's point one. Point two, if your child is over the age of 15, you need not register with the Department of Education for Home Education. Then your child falls within the FET phase or the further education and training phase. And then you can simply select the curriculum that you would like to use and continue on and hopefully to end up with a school leaving certificate. And in our case, that would be the National Senior Certificate. Now, I still see a few um, questions here which relates absolutely to that. We cannot assist with that registration. We would have liked to, but unfortunately we cannot. However, if you list that you are using BrainLine, don't only use the BrainLine word, also say that you are using the CAPS curriculum because that's what they want to hear. They want to see that you are actually aligning the education of your child with the South African based curriculum. So that is the one thing that they would like to hear. With regard to assessment, what kind of assessment would you be doing? You'll be doing CAPS based assessment. So you will be answering all the right questions with the right answers. And we are happy to be here to ensure that all of our parents and learners are compliant with the CAPS curriculum and can actually, in the end of grade 12, get your national senior certificate. Okay, do we have to register our children for the Department of Education? I think I've answered that one. Um, I think I have captured all of the registration issues. However, there are a few issues, Karen, if you will allow me, that I'm quickly going to address here. And um, there's one from Sean. As uh, we live in a different time zone, although based in South Africa from 2022, any considerations that we have to make, assessments and, and tests, et cetera. Sean, our learners are global citizens. We are happy to be part of those um, learners' lives. And yes, we are aware of the fact that they are all over the globe. So what we do is we are aware of it if you indicate to us that you live abroad. And then we make accommodation for that. In other words, if you fall in a time zone that will be um, a little bit later or a little bit sooner, we, then we do accommodate you and we see to it that you are able to also submit your assessment on time. It doesn't matter where you are on the globe. So yes, Karen and our assessment company really looks well after that. Sharon asks, how do we know our child is progressing as required? Sharon, there's lots of things that you can use to determine whether your child is progressing. And I think as an old homeschool mom, I can tell you, you've got a gut feel. My child is doing well or my child is not doing well. That's the first thing. The second thing is, how does my child do in the assessment that is provided by BrainLine? How does my child do when they do the activities in the textbook? Are they doing it very easily? Are they having difficulties? Are they zipping through it like a hot knife through butter? Or how are they fitting with the assessment? That gives you a good indication or, or if your child is progressing well. James asks, how do we stop on the one side and slot in on your side? He's in a Model C government school. James, I think, especially in the lower grades, you will find that transition from us to school and from school to back into back to us or whatever the case may be, should be a smooth transition. The only thing is that you need to relax about thinking, but now my child is behind. We always encourage you to start if you enroll now at the beginning of the third term, like Karen said, right at the beginning of this discussion. You're not going to start on week one, day one of the curriculum, and then tell your child we've got to catch up with all of this before we start where we are supposed to be. We always recommend that you start at the beginning of term three, as we are now in this particular uh, academic calendar, and then revise back where you feel the, the need arises. That is the best way to approach that. We would not like uh, to cause despondency in our learners. That's not the idea behind it at all. Sean asks, could you provide a sample of a grade six online class, please? Khada, do you have one readily available? Maybe yes, I do. Can... I do. Oh, have... that's wonderful, wonderful. Um, and then we can actually just address Sean's um, 
question on a sample of a grade six online class. And while you're doing that, uh, Love It is also asking, are we able to view a recording of any online recorded lesson? Absolutely. Great, we can love it. Answer that question. Um, Just a grade, we... please, Colleen, for Love It. Is that also in the junior school? Love it if you can just maybe uh, reply on that one. And while you're doing that, um, the examples of grade R classes. Um, Bethenia, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. We don't have classes for grade R. However, we do have a weekly with our mentor. We've got a weekly get together for our little grade R students. We would just would like to have them see that they are part of a larger group and there's a sense of community, and there's a sense of these are my Mikeys, and I can see my Mikeys, and we do a lot of things together, but they aren't formal classes. What Khada does is she does a few classes where we actually support the parent. What are you having issues with in grade R1, 2, and 3? And that's where you can actually relate with her as the parent. What can I do to do this better? And what are the challenges that you are experiencing? Khadar, are you almost ready with that grade six class? Yes, I have it ready. Thank you. So let's see what Khadar has for us. Uh, Adele, I think you might need to share and give her the host option now, please. Right. I think the audio is not coming through at the moment. It's sometimes Zoom isn't very happy sharing um, sound files, et cetera, et cetera. Perhaps uh, we could ask that those who want something like this, Colleen, that we um, just get them to send us their email addresses or perhaps just to email um, Gerda directly and she can perhaps assist them then with, with a separate view session. Aaron, ek kan anders kan ek het vir een van julle, dit lyk my of daar is setting dat ek fout is by my skielik. Ek gaan, kan ek het vir een van julle stuur? Uh, yes, what we can do, Karen, is I have yesterday's grade 4 video readily available. Right. Um, right. If you would like to, me to quickly show people what that looks like, it's a good example of a grade 4 maths lesson. I think my audio was, as luck would have it, it worked yesterday. So let's see if I can quickly... Share my screen. There we go. Ek het nie vir jou een berg geteken, so dat jy makkelijk kan onthou, aan die linkerkant van die berg is het 0, 1, 2, 3 en 4, en aan die rechterkant van die berg is het 5, 6, 7, 8 en 9. Dit help ons net, om te sien hoe werk afronde. Ek gaan nou mooi vir jou verduidelik. So ons eerste vraag sê rond elke getal af tot die naaste 10. Nou sê ek altyd, kyk wat is gevra. Daar is gevra tot die naaste 10. So kom ons van 387. Ek gaan het so my onder vir jou groot skryf. 387. Wat is gevra die naaste 10? Kyk dan na die een daarna. So kom ons kyk wat beteken dit vir die berg hier. Die een daarna is 7. So 7 lee aan die kant van die berg. Wat beteken, my 10 waar tussen ek kyk is 80 en die volgende 10, 90. So hierdie kant sal 80 wees, daai kant sal 90 wees. For that, that's just a quick snippet out of one of the videos. I hope you heard the sound. Perfectly, yes, thank you, we did. 
Um, Adele, would you like to share something about typically a, a, a high school class, perhaps one of the maths lit classes? Yeah, I'm going to try to get a minute. Go on. Okay, we'll go on with that in between. Um, I think there was some more that possibly I can give on to Colleen, but while we're doing that, um, anonymous attendee asked, and then I did ask about the, the grades, and the grades came out there as a high school and a junior school. So uh, with the books that we need to purchase, if we're in the IB program, do we need to purchase teacher's guides? Are there secondhand handbooks available for languages and maths? The first thing for, for, to remember is that the maths program that we run in the high school is absolutely Brainline's um, own maths, which has been developed. So we give you, if you come to us and you do our, our IB aligned, you're gonna do our math system, you're gonna get those, those um, teacher's guides. In general, the, the question about teacher's guides as a teacher is something that it, the word says what it is. It's not an answer book, it's a teacher's guide. So if I want to know how to teach a certain topic or to get examples of how to explain something, then, then a teacher's guide sometimes is quite handy. But very often they are very disappointing because parents buy them and they think they're just gonna have the answers that they're gonna give to their children and the child's gonna sit and have, have an answer book. And that very seldom is the case. Um, it's, it's very frustrating. I wonder how many teacher's guides that I have, I've even broken the spine of by opening them for then just scrolling through them with a little flick of my fingers. So my general answer would be that um, if you do it through Brainline and you decide to use our online reader, we do supply them with them. However, very important to remember at this time of the year is that we're all counting our cents. Um, moving your child is already going to mean that there will be additional costs. And Snaplify is absolutely awesome. They have collaborated with a lot of the publishers. There are some that have not gone with it, but Snaplify has allowed us all to, every single parent, anybody in South Africa, parents, students, teachers, anybody can actually register a free account with them. And once you've registered the free account and you've logged onto Snaplify, you go onto the area which says free educational books, and you can get all of those books, including most of those teacher's guides as well, for totally free. So before you buy an additional textbook, please just look at that at this stage. And then once again, as the assessment person, um, it's absolutely critical to understand that my assessors and my team of examiners and the IEB's team of examiners, because basically assessment aspects is the mini IEB sitting inside Brainline preparing um, all the assessments, et cetera, to the level that they have to be and to, to the um, exact curriculum. Very important to remember is that the textbook is never assessed. What has to be assessed is the curriculum. So one textbook might have an example of Johnny picking apples and the orchid, um, the, the orchard that he's doing it in, and somebody else might have an example of somebody walking and actually um, collecting seashells on the seashore. And the apples and the seashells are not what's being assessed. Whatever they're doing with them, that's what's being assessed. So please be very careful as well. Don't just throw all the books that you've got out and say, but Brainline uses different books. We're assessing skills and content according to the curriculum. Colleen mentioned just now CAPS curriculum. The IAB from grade 10 upwards in most subjects and very specifically in 11 and 12 for the subjects has its own adapted curriculum. And we even share that with the students. We know, so they know exactly what is different because sometimes you'll look at a CAPS textbook and all the books in South Africa bar a small number are written for the CAPS curriculum. Very few are written for the IAB itself. So any notes that are missing, any little bits that they need that are not in the textbooks in the high school, they will get from the teachers on the online portal that um, Adele has already shown you. Please don't throw books away. Please don't go and buy excess. Look at those. And if you need further guidance, ask the specific subject teacher. Where there will be a difference and where there will be costs will be in terms of um, the languages and in terms of then having the readers. The readers is a problem. And then having secondhand books at the moment, this time of the year, I don't think there are any left in South Africa. I think everybody has grabbed everyone they possibly can. Um, use Facebook and so on as a, that type of platform to ask amongst people. 
but also at this stage, postage, getting things with couriers takes far too long. Rather consider getting something from um, any of the online platforms so that they can use it as an e-reader as well. Adele, I think you're ready. Okay, yeah, how probeer share. No, can you let's see? Mm -hmm. No, let's try. Kom ik lang weer? Yep. Nee, ik hoor jou, maar ik hoor niet die lees niet. Oké, okay, hou gaan. Kan ik langs hier komen, Cora? Ik hoor jou niet praat. Ja, ik heb te vermoeden, mijn klank is zelfs als um, dingetjes in. Maar basis kan ik gaan ek maar praat terwijl het stream. So, basically what I'm doing here is I'm explaining to kids what the difference is between income and cost and how it influences your profit and loss. And then as you can see in the next slide, I'm explaining to them what a break-even graph means. So, I'm just going to uh, forward a little bit. So while I'm explaining it, I'm explaining to them exactly what the graph entails. So um, the axes, etc. And while I'm doing it, the kids are able to put up their hand and ask me questions. Why am I numbering it in a certain way? Or why am I um, labeling it in a certain way? So it's a very interactive class. Um, this is a very big file, so I don't want to share it to you any um, now. But basically what we do is, um, I'm I'm bored and chalk. I'm one of those students. Uh, if there's one of those teachers, then I scrape. And the more you explain, especially in mathematics, the more students ask questions and interact with you. And I think the rest of our panelists will agree that the more interactive you are with your students, and the more you engage them, the more they want to ask you. And those students that normally doesn't ask in class and oh, I'm for my cake those type of kids that's that's hiding away from from teachers you'll find that in an online class they'll they come alive because they don't feel that you are pointing to them they feel that they are behind the scenes but they still have that human interaction where you talk to them um i'm just going to forward a little bit so what i've done here is i've explained to them what break even means and um in this way they understand it better and they can ask so i changed the scenario so once i get a little bit far further i'll start introducing the algebra side so i think um online classes is on another level when you get to brainline um you'll find that we're not teaching the textbook like karen said um, we are teaching skills we are teaching outcomes we are teaching prepare for out there and um this is one of my special uh, lessons to present, break even, because it touches finances, it touches mathematics, it touches you as a person. So, and I think Hada also, when they do the, when we do our online classes for students, we try to put each student in their individual capacity in the class. So we consider all backgrounds and we consider cultures and we consider everything when we present online. And um, I think I can speak for all my teachers in the high school that we have a, a passion for teaching. And, um, and Karen also mentioned that the teachers, they, they are falling over each other to get to Brandline to teach because it's something that if you haven't experienced teaching at Brandline, you haven't done it yet. So um, I think that's a thumbs up for all our teachers. Thanks, Karen. Okay. I think also what, what Adele has done now is to also show you Something I think which is very important, um, and she said that she's a she's a chalk and, and board type teacher. So I think one thing that's very important is, um, and I've looked at it at, at many lessons taught over many different platforms because I watch what's happening internationally as well. Um, and Brain Nine has really got each teacher has got got their own way of doing it. So you will notice that our teachers are using um, iPads to write on. Um, digital microscopes which plug in onto the laptops to show the student things. Um, virtual reality using the merge cubes um, where they can actually look at the heart, turn it around, look what it looks like. 
um, that type of thing, which you wouldn't normally be able to do. Physical sciences, um, our assessments and so on, we do using um, simulations. And it's interesting, and I think Colleen and I, they just sort of have a gentle smile in the background with our cameras off when we sit in on meetings and schools are desperate. How are they going to do all their practicals? And somebody says, well, I wonder if we could use a FET simulation. And we just think, gee, you're thinking about that now? We've been doing it for five years. So whatever the, the subject, we, we have the availability of skills amongst our staff to be able to address those specific things. So I think that's really awesome. There's one question about um, the university entrances and what levels they have obtained. I think that's one of the one of the best things. When somebody knows where you work, you start hearing um, everything that's bad about a place and everything that's good about a place. And um, I recently went and had um, blood drawn and at a Medicross clinic. And the sister who drew my blood said to me, um, Oh, I'm so sorry, you've been sitting here waiting and, 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 and then I think she probably thought I was scared of the needle. So, you know, we had the general talk about, do you have, you know, kids and do you have whatever? And I thought, okay, just do the blood. And then she said, oh, you work for Brainline? Oh, I can't tell you how many people in our family have gone through Brainline. My sister's brother, my, and that sort of spread out and it was awesome because they were from chartered accountants through to somebody who is lecturing at university through to and that just from the most unlikely source of information. So all of us um, that work at Brainline, we, we're very proud of our students that, that excel. And I think looking realistically at, at our matrix from last year, um, and I think in South Africa, there's, we have it in the newspapers every year. The newspapers come out and there's an individual who was exceptionally good and poor him, he got all these distinctions and he didn't get um, into study medicine. We have um, one of our students, last year is not the only one who got in for medicine, but there's one of our students who actually had eight distinctions and he was accepted at four different universities in South Africa into the medical faculty. I think that says more than enough about, about what, what they can do and how the universities are actually looking for these students and how they excel. A lot of that goes along with Brainline and we can take a lot of the honor, but I think a lot of the honor Colleen and I always like to share is from the IB. They have taught these students and our assessment programs that we have to run to be in line with the IB has taught them to think. There is no rote learning in the IB. You learn the facts and then you ask to apply them. You don't draw the heart. We give you the heart diagram and we ask you to explain how it works and what would happen if a specific part didn't, didn't function correctly or what would happen to this in this diagram if this and this hormone was not released. It's thinking and that is exactly what university is all about. And that is why these students excel as well. Our top student also from last year, she was with him. They, they sort of toyed about which one of the two is really the best. Um, she's been accepted in um, the UK to go and study with her seven distinctions that she had. And of those seven, four were 95 plus. So the opportunities are there. It's absolutely how much commitment the student puts in. And that includes all our practical subjects. She, as an example, had dramatic arts. Um, she had visual arts, two of her 95 plus subjects, which she did in distance. It's doable. It depends on the child and on the child's commitment. So I think that one covers that one nicely. Will blame on matric allow for entering to foreign universities? I think, Colleen, you wanted to answer it. Sorry, I've already said quite a bit on that. And the percentage yeah. university acceptance last year, again, remember that we don't let anybody get uh, turned away. We're looking at an 85% plus entrance um, or not entrance pass rate. And there was not one single solitary student of ours who wanted to go to university and who had the right subject choices to be able to get in. Because remember, although there are no longer um, things like designated subjects, there's still the, the right subject choice to get into your field of study. So even that is very, very, very difficult to look at and to actually give a meaningful answer because it's very easy to get university entrance passes. That, that's not the trick. The trick is to get it for the, the field that you want to study in. And that is what we primarily focused on. Sorry, Colleen, I'm gonna hand it over to you because I think that's the end of our questions on that part. I think there was some in the chat. 
itself, but I think everything there has been answered as well. Perhaps I can ask anybody if there are any others, if they would just like to um, email um, any one of us. Mine is easy. Our names are on screen. So it's just Karen at, Adele at, Gerda at, or Colleen at, and we brainline.com, not COZA. Colleen, if you'd like to end off with the last bits. No, you're a nasty one. You always steal my thunder with all the good stuff about all of our university entrants and all of the guys who pass at 85%. So, but I'm okay with that. You can have all my thunder. You do so well. Um, I would just like to thank everybody for being panelists on this um, session of ours. And I hope all of our parents had all of their questions answered. And as you can see from Karin's reaction and Gerda's reaction and Adal, we're extremely proud of our company. And more and above all of that, we are extremely proud of our grade 12s each and every year. They astound us with their tenacity, with their consistency of work throughout the year. And we just look back and we just are amazed by what they do. And um, I think that's the crux of what we do, send them out into the world as complete individuals, well prepared for, work, for life after school. I think there's a last one for Gerda, perhaps. I think she's going to have the last word today um, about the juniors and their, I think perhaps she answered them already because the questions disappeared. It was about juniors and orals and prepared reading, but perhaps there would be other people who would like to hear as well. So if you just want to tell them as well, I don't know if, they, if you answered it as a private, I didn't see, sorry. Yes, just when you gave me permission to answer the question, I've sent the, 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 the typed one. Okay, yes, from grade three and up, we have orals and reading um, uh, done by the, the learner do the oral or the reading. And the, then the, the, the parent makes a, a video of that um, part, the, the reading part that we wanted him to do or her wanted to do. And then you upload it on our Brain Online platform and then we download and assess it. So yes, we do orals and we assess the orals as well. Thanks, Gerda. And that of course goes all the way through right up to grade 12 as well. We have special permission from um, the IB or we've had for five years. And the other schools are now desperately trying to find out how to do this as well, because obviously they do realize that this is going to be a challenge this year, in spe uh, especially with regard to social distancing. So we've got all of that covered on our sides. If you join us, we'll help you and assist you to be able to do all of that. There was one question, Colleen, I might have um, lapsed for a moment, but there was one question that I wrote down and just um, and that was with uh, what our policy is with regard to um, the topics on sex education. And I can ask you to just to answer that one, please, because I don't think we have responded to that. Yes, I did put that in writing, but it's a good thing to do that audibly as well. Our policy on that is purely and simple, that the parent is the prime educator in his or her own home. So the parent has the authority to decide what is being taught to their children or not. So what we've done, especially in life orientation, I think we um, parents are concerned about contentious issues. We have identified those areas and we actually place those under a password and that's with regard to content, the material. So if you would like to offer that to your child or if you would like to see that before you offer that to, the, to your child, you would phone us and ask for the password. We would then provide you with a password and then you'll be able to see exactly what is this content and am I comfortable with sharing this with my child or not? However, regardless of whether you are going to cover that content with your child or not, we never assess on that content. And we haven't found assessment with ourselves or with the IB on content that can be considered to be, and I think, um, this particular child was, uh, this particular question, sorry, was pertinent to sex education. So we will never assess children on that. We find that we are not going to go into waters where the parent is actually the authority on what to do and when to do that. Thanks. I think that's very, uh, um, we have, did have a student uh, recently where there was a query from a parent, but this was somebody who had chosen life sciences and was doing the grade 11 curriculum. So I think that's also very pertinent in terms of, of subject choice for the high school. 
should one choose to do subjects in which um, something like life sciences where there are topics like this one would have to make that decision prior to choosing because obviously that would be discussed in classes but then it becomes not an ethical discussion it becomes absolutely a scientific discussion of human reproduction that type of thing as well um, there were some questions and I don't know how to, because I saw them disappear and I saw her typing. So I know she has responded to that about the exams. Perhaps just a general thing that our examinations for our senior students and then also that includes um, how students already at the ages where they're writing those exams. Those would be written according to the set timetable on specific dates with our passwords being released. Um, as Colleen also mentioned now with the passwords, the passwords being released these are downloaded um, the student writes them why do we write why don't we type because final assessment at the end of grade 12 in south africa is still a written um, assessment and there is a very important well there are lots of important skills that go on from the starting of learning to write right through to the higher levels where we are writing um, so we follow the same curriculum or the same requirements that would be required there are some tasks which are allowed to be typed um, the use of things like PowerPoint, Excel, that type of thing. So that is used where it is applicable, but exams are written and not typed. Um, just think of the student who would have a typewriter and think of the spell checks and things that can happen at the, at the same time. Um, there's been very little about invigilation this time. We've normally had a lot of questions on that. Perhaps that's something that could come up in future. So let's just mention that our examinations always have to be invigilated by an independent invigilator, which is then registered a person, not family, registered on our Brainline portal, going through the basic training of what the requirements are. If there are barriers to learning, we do additional training of what is required. But then obviously taking into account that now with COVID, it's difficult to travel, difficult to get to, um, where we have somebody who could individually um, invigilate, and we have very special um, permission and, and specific rules where the parents then do get special permission now to actually be able to invigilate so that they can keep their children safe in their home environment. It may be a family member and we then just have a set of rules regarding recording. It's no more difficult than what you have done today to attend our Zoom session. There is no cost involved to it whatsoever then because you would use a free version of Zoom to use your laptop to do a recording like we are doing today. So I trust that we've answered all the questions. I don't see any more around. Um, further, it does look as though everything has gone well. Thank you to everybody who has attended. There's still a bunch of people that are still around that haven't left us. So we trust that we've answered all your questions. Otherwise, we look forward to um, getting emails from you and responding to you. Thank you to, very much to everybody, to the panelists, as well as everybody who has attended. Have an awesome week, a further weekend, and stay warm. <laughs>